Nina and Marco and me on a Monday. Wow. Well, welcome back to uh, Think Tech. Welcome back to Mina, Marco, and me on a Monday. We'll be talking about energy today. We'll be talking about some very interesting developments uh, that have happened. Uh, Mina joins us by Skype from Kauai. Hi, Mina. Hi. Nice good, to be with you guys. Good to have you back. And Marco joins us from uh, ProVision Solar uh, in Hilo. Welcome back, Marco. Actually, the beautiful People's Republic of Santa Cruz, but you, know, and, uh, you guys are of a certain vintage that you will remember a Mamas and Papas song that goes along the lines of Monday, Monday, ba, 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 with Mia and Jay, ba, 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 thanks for having us on again, Jay. Thank you. Wow, it's a good thing you're in energy, not in music. Yeah. Anyway, you guys, we got chock-a-block today. We got uh, three important things to discuss. And the first was the ruling that came down last week uh, from the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, uh, which uh, after, what, seven months, eight months, uh, they have made a decision about the PSIP, the Power Supply Improvement Plan, that was submitted by uh, Hawaiian Electric last year. So, uh, Marco, how about reporting on that? I'd be happy to, Jay. So just to kind of bring everybody uh, to the same page, this has been a, about a three and a half, four year process and project. Uh, the, 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 what I'll call the proto PSIP, the proto PSIP was really the last integrated resource plan or IRP, which was submitted by the companies Hiko Helco Miko back in 2013. And that morphed to what was the first power supply improvement plan submitted to the commission uh, August 2014, and that was deemed to be inadequate by the commission. They came up with uh, the next rev, the next iteration, uh, and submitted it April 2016, and that was deemed to be inadequate by the commission. They submitted their last PSIP December 23, 2016, and they passed that. They gave it a passing grade in the decision and order, which was issued Friday afternoon. Uh, that said, there were a number of guidelines and caveats, which to me uh, made very clear that while they were passing the, the term paper, so to speak, just having come from teaching myself at UC Santa Cruz this past quarter, while they were passing this uh, document, giving it their seal of approval, they made very clear uh, their concerns on a number of levels and their guidance in terms of what they will be requiring the Hawaiian Electric companies to do as we move forward. That's kind of the 50,000 foot uh, sketch that I get. Well, what is a power supply improvement plan and uh, what did this one say? You're talking about the actual uh, piece of which was submitted back in December? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a very long document. My recollection is some clocked in somewhere under 2,000 pages, so I'm not going to try to characterize the document of that length in just a few minutes, but their focus in their executive summary, uh, HECO's focus was uh, on the near term, which they were asked to do by the commission in previous guidance, the near term being the present uh, 2017 to 2021, and Hawaiian Electric did a better job, according to the commission's DNO, uh, focusing on the near term uh, in the next four or five years. And one of the things that was mentioned in the DNO on Friday is that the ambitiousness of, of the near term plans of Hawaiian Electric over the next four or five years is truly rather stunning. And reading specifically from one of the pages there, the companies, the companies being Hawaiian Electric, the company's resource plans include procurement of nearly 400, 400 megawatts of new renewable resources across all service territories by 2021, which is really a very short time away. Collectively, this represents the largest new generation procurement ever undertaken in the state. So Hawaiian Electric has this work cut out for them and then some to try to come anywhere close to 400 megawatts of cost-effective new renewable energy online in four and a half years. Well, why, uh, what, um, what, what, what kind of renewable energy did they say? If it's a 2,000-page document, surely they would have said what it was. 
Well, in the executive summary of the last piece of they provide data, and I don't have it right in front of me, Jay, but they provide numbers for each of the five islands that they serve in terms of X number of megawatts of wind, X megawatts of utility scale solar, X megawatts of demand response, X megawatts of uh, uh, coming from other sources as well. Again, I don't have all that memorized, but that's if you add up all those all those uh, from rooftop solar on the micro level to utility scale, it comes up to 400 megawatts worth of additional generation, which is, uh, as they put, you know, it's the, represents the largest uh, effort uh, at new procurement in such a short period of time. And one of the focuses that I, one of my main takeaways from this, this decision order, and this just leaps out at me in a number of places, is the focus of the commission on cost, on cost containment, and their concern that according to the PSIF, the cost of electricity over the next five and ten years across the foreign electric service territories is going to go up significantly. And it's clear, uh, again, my takeaway is that is a principal source of concern and discussion for the, the commission. So, so does this mean that uh, those 2,000 pages are approved and that now, for the first time since, what did you say, 2013, uh, Wine Electric is free to proceed on the basis of the of the plan that it submitted last year. Is that what this means? Well, that that's my no. take, Jane, and I'm happy to turn it over to, to Mina. It's yes, it's a yes, but that's my take. Yes, it's approved, but we are going to be scrutinizing carefully any new power purchase agreements. We're going to scrutinize carefully. The rate increase proposals that are before the commission right now for HECO, for HECO and HELCO, and soon to be probably for MECO as well, and that they are very concerned about affordability, mm. about affordability to the rate payers of these higher projected rates. So, um, Mina Marita, you were always concerned about affordability when you sat on the commission, and since. Uh, how do you feel about the PSIP? How do you feel about the approval? Okay. so. And make sure that this isn't a blanket approval. This is just an acceptance of the plan, and that any major um, capital investment would have to go to the commission for approval. So, so the over the overall plan has been accepted, but the parts of it will still have to go through PUC approval. And. Um, just in general, how I feel about it, well, yeah. I'm glad we're out of the planning focus and and getting into the execution of near-term action. Um, but I do have some concerns, I, again, about the cost. I do have concerns about the ability to execute. Um, in, and in execute, um, what I mean is the ability for um, PICO to put out RFPs that are really resource and technology agnostic to give us the um, most cost-effective um, ways to to move forward in a way to mitigate um, or a way to mitigate uh, repair impact. There was a warning, wasn't there, in, in that decision in order indicating that the commission would expect them uh, to be very thoughtful and uh, analytical about uh, trying to reach affordability. And it was not convinced that, that, that they had considered that, but it wanted them to. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's always been one of the basic, basic objectives is um, um, affordability, reliability, um, and accessibility so that everybody, the entire system, can benefit from um, clean energy policies. You know, one thing is, it strikes me is that this is actually a plan that has long awaited approval uh, years, <clears throat> and even the last iteration, eight months. And uh, if, if uh, Hawaiian Electric wants to build uh, 400 megawatts in the next, what, four years, as Marco pointed out, um, that depend and, and each element of the plan has to be approved, each RFP has to be approved, uh, then, then whether they can make that four-year target 
really depends on whether the PUC will act promptly when they submit the RFPs for approval. Isn't that true? Yeah, that's that's one of the um, one of the challenges that you know when when they go in that you know everything is reviewed in a timely way. Yeah, well, it strikes me that um, if we want to make that goal or any goal, we're going to have to move with with great alacrity at this point. Marco, you have any closing words on this before we take a break? Yeah, I, I just back up Nina on that completely in terms of the procurement is uh, the commission makes clear in a number of places that they're concerned about the procurement process. They write, the, co the company should not assume the commission will waive the competitive bidding process for any of these proposed projects that they're going to be really looking uh, at the bottom bottom line, how much does it cost in there. They make explicit that they, let's see the sentence here, the commission expects the companies to strive to procure resources at the lowest cost possible and at costs lower than estimated in the near-term action plans. Mm -hmm. So as before, as certainly during your day, Mina, uh, the commission will be looking at affordability on every deal. But that's that's fine, isn't it? Isn't that the way it's supposed to work? Yeah, I, I you know, it, it's the eco companies being able to make the business case that this is good for, this is good for the company, this is good for the rate payer. Um, so yeah, they they have to strive to do that, make their business case. Well, on why, on why investment is necessary. Am I right to think that um, while this, this plan, especially the last iteration uh, you know, submitted last December, uh, was pending without being approved, uh, that, 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 um, that put a, a, a cloud over things, and uh, especially in the wake of the Nextera deal. And, and so the, the, there wasn't a lot of RFP work, am I right, during this period? And now, now that the lid is off, now that presumably they can go forward, um, then uh, they should be submitting RFPs left and right. And almost we should, now that this approval has happened last Friday, am I right to think that we're going to have a lot of RFPs submitted and that we're going to move ahead at full steam? Am I right about that? Well, I think, you know, again, it's a matter of prioritizing and where, what investments are you going to make to get the biggest bang for your buck? And that's what you should be um, focused on. So I think, you know, we're, we're still on the same trajectory. What, what you're really operating from is a principle of no regret, that whatever you do, um, whatever you're acting upon will... You know, we're not going to regret it five years down the road. Yeah. Okay, well, now we've got to wait and see what happens. Uh, if, if there are RFPs in the pipeline, maybe they'll come forward now. Maybe Hawaiian Electric has already lined them up uh, and is negotiating them or um, organizing them. And we should expect to see more soon, don't you think? Yeah. I, I would think so. Um, I mean, one of my concerns right now is how does this all get reconciled in actually what's already on the table? Yeah. Okay, when we come back from this break, we will discuss that very thing. And one of the things on the table is Ho Hanua. And when we come back from this break, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about that and how that's doing and will do. Uh, here on Mina, Marco, and me on a Monday, we'll be right back. the foundation for a better life. A 
Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at, from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Okay, we're back with Mina Marco and me here on a Monday talking about energy in the state of Hawaii. A lot going on. Marco, you wanted to show a slide and show you know uh, some of the points that were covered by the PUC's uh, uh, decision and order. Can we see that slide now? Marco, what do you got on this? Sure. And as you're queuing that up, Jay, I just want to, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, and I mean this sincerely, now I have a tremendous amount of respect and uh, admiration for really the thousands and thousands of hours that the folks at Hawaiian Electric put into this multi-year process of, of power supply improvement. I mean, it truly represents a monumental effort. and. Uh, and they're definitely to be commended uh, for doing that. But, uh, the, the, to me, the money quote from this 40-some-odd page document uh, from last Friday is, is the following from the commission. Given the substantial increase in rates forecasted in the report, the piece of, the commission is concerned that the companies have not fully considered the affordability of their plans. The companies have provided only limited responses to the commission's instruction to analyze customer and implementation risks, the companies do not appear to have evaluated the capital investments, financial commitments, and resulting increasing rates in the context of affordability to customers and the risk of stranded assets. I think to me those three sentences really hammer at what the Commission's most serious concerns are. And you, and you can bet that they'll be, uh, they'll be uh, following those concerns or examining everything with those concerns in mind going forward. But what about this chart? What does this chart show us now? This is a chart from the PSIP. Well, this is actually from the commission decision and order, and it is showing what they, uh, the commission believes or took away from the PSIP in terms of the projected increase in rates across the HECO territories, and it's, it's rather striking. For HECO, they're projecting rate increases, or HECO's projecting rate increases by 17.8% in the next five years to 2021, and by 44.1% increase uh, over the next 10 years. For HELCO, 25.1% over the next five years, 429 for the next 10 years. MECO, 18.2% for the next five years and 23 percent for the next 10 years so it's been an interesting contrast uh kind of almost counterintuitive that as our island utilities bring on more and more lower cost renewables that the rates are not commensurate in terms of going down on the downward side of the slope uh compared to uh, or in relation to the new renewable generation brought online. Now, I know full well that that's only part of the puzzle and that there are all sorts of costs that it goes into running a utility company beyond what you're paying for power. I get that. But still, it's kind of striking that our utilities are buying, uh, hopefully, cheaper and cheaper power, and yet there are still, there's still an upward trend, uh, a significant upward trend, not trivial, upward trend according to Hawaiian Electric projections of higher rates over the next five to ten years. So this chart was actually created by the PUC based on the information in the uh, PSIP. And in, in, in doing that, it sounds like to me, although they have concerns about it, they're essentially, they're essentially acknowledging that there will be increases, no? Well, I mean, we'll know much more tangibly in terms of that acknowledgement after they finish what they need to do with the two pending uh, rate increase uh, requests for uh, two of the three that are before the commission right now. Yeah, that's the tension, isn't it? Mina, you have anything on this? 
Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, this has always been the concern, right? And how we're affecting, um, you know, economic dispatch by the way the, the PPAs are constructed by the um, inability to control um, net metering. Um, yeah, all of these are coming, um, you know, to, to, to a crisis point. Yeah. Well, this reminds me of a comment made by Lou uh, Pugliarisi on our America, Energy in America show last week. He said there are some places and some situations where renewables, simply we, we can't afford them. It's too expensive to build the infrastructure. And if we think we're going to get there quickly, we're not because of the costs involved and because people won't pay the costs involved. And I mean, I guess what I would put to you both is, uh, can we do this? Does this shed some light? I mean, this is a tension that's going on for some time. That is progress versus cost. Uh, are, are we going to have a problem getting there? Does this reveal an, an inherent problem in moving to renewables? Well, I think, I, I, I think you know, it's really understanding that getting to 100% is difficult. It's going to be a real challenge, and that um, it has to be done methodically laying laying out the foundational things that need to be done to get to a hundred percent you know what we've done in the past the past decade is you know we picked up all the low-hanging fruit you know and as I as we get into higher integration numbers it's going to be a more difficult challenge yeah is and, it doable need, Marco do you think it's you doable need the right to be able to integrate yeah and 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 that that comes with um you know um substantial investments to modernize the grid and one of the first things that we need to modernize is you know giving the grid more transparency so the system operators can see what the hell is happening on the other side of the system mm -hmm. um, so advanced metering is, is, is a critical investment to be made you know, well, one of the points raised was um, we need to have more research. We need to have more sophisticated equipment um, for that uh, infrastructure in order to move ahead at the speed we'd like to go. And maybe um, mm -hmm. we, should, we should wait till the technology catches up with what we hope to happen um, before we execute, you know, all the expansion. And this is not, this is a, a comment that Lou Puyo made. I'm not sure that applies to Hawaii, but I wondered what your thoughts were. No, I don't think we need to wait, but it, it, what we need to do is to be making the right investment in order to move forward. And one of the investments that's critical here is flexible generators and flexible generators that can run with the most efficient fuel um, uh, that complement renewable energy. Marco, so you got as, anything as more on this? We move forward with this major roadblock on, on keep telling ourselves no fossil fuel generators. It's not going to be done affordably. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we only have a few minutes left. Let's, let's talk about who Hanua and where that fits in the picture of um, you know, development of renewables, uh, the uh, PUC's view of things. Uh, and cost. What's happening with uh, Hu Hanua? So this is a, a power plant that is not in operation at this point, a Pepe Keo, home of Coast, the Big Island. It used to burn coal back in Hilo Coast Power Co Company days uh, long ago. Uh, it has been, uh, there's an attempt to revivify it by a company called Hu Hanua based on the mainland and it would be burning, assuming it were to get a, a regulatory approval, it would be burning biomass uh, in the form of trees uh, grown on the Big Island. There is a power purchase agreement pending before the commission right now. Uh, last Monday was the deadline for the parties to the docket to submit their uh, uh, their position papers, and then today is the deadline for Hu Honua to respond to the, what was submitted last, uh, last Monday. And kind of the, uh, the money question there, in my opinion, is, whether this commission would will approve of a power purchase agreement 
that, according to the reports I've read, would have an all-in cost of roughly 22 plus cents a kilowatt hour. 22 plus cents a kilowatt hour. Whether that's even remotely feasible or doable, desirable, given the guidance that we've been getting consistently from uh, Chair Randy Awase and, and in particular from this DNO on uh, the PSIPs, and I'll just read one of the last sentences there. The commission expects, expects the companies to strive to procure resources at the lowest cost possible, lowest cost possible and at lower cost than estimated in the near-term action plan. So given that, assuming that they were to be consistent, is there a case to be made of why this commission should approve a power purchase agreement for biomass produced firm power at 22 cents a kilowatt hour? Yeah, what do you think, Mina? Do you, do you support this? Well, I, it, it, someone else that did um, an analysis uh, told me that the, the levelized cost over a 30-year period is actually 28 cents. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and, and that most, most of the risk has been shifted to the rate payer through fixed costs rather than the investor. Mm. Well, this and, doesn't and seem consistent all with all that concern that about affordability, does it? That are going to be, that are going to rise. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I think, you know, um, it, 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 yeah, how do you reconcile projects like this? Well, you got, you, got, you know, well, we visited Kauai a couple of times in the last uh, couple of months and and uh, saw the you know the solar farm there, and saw the Kauai Green Energy Program, which is uh, very interesting. You know, it's not dissimilar from the Huhanoa model. And and what's interesting is that their 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 cost per kilowatt hour is way less uh, than 22 or 28 cents. Um, so. Uh, no, please, Mia, go ahead. Yeah, I was trying to look up the cost. I think the cost is 17 cents. Yeah. You know, and, and, and well, um, go ahead. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Marco? There's one important difference uh, to be made between PV plus storage now versus burning biomass in a combustion plant now. And that is that burning biomass in a combustion plant is firm power, whereas we are not at the point yet in terms of the cost or reliability or the experience in the field where PV plus batteries can be considered firm 24 hour a day on when you needed power. Now, I believe we will get there, but we are not there yet. So it's, it's a false, false comparison in a sense to look at PV plus storage of 11 cents a kilowatt hour on Kauai to what who knew it would produce on a firm basis. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? Would you approve this? I was talking about the green energy project, which is a biomass project on yeah. Kauai yeah. at 17 cents. Okay. And they, and they, and they burn 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And they are dispatchable and they are less. I mean, it's interesting that you have one that's actually in place uh, happening right now in Kauai at less, and yet the other project in the Big Island is for substantially more, and there it is on the table. Uh, why, why is there a difference? Why can't the same technology and model be used in both of them so as to achieve at least comparable rates? I, I got to imagine, Jay, you know, channeling who who knew, and I have no inside information whatsoever. This is just me kind of common sense that that they need to charge a certain amount over the length of a power purchase agreement in order to uh, break even and then some, right? Otherwise, otherwise, it makes no sense to enter into a PPA where they, they're knowingly going to lose money. So, I mean, keep in mind that the, the owners of who who knew have already sunk, if I'm not mistaken, more than $100 million dollars into that power plant in which they received zero in terms of, of compensation or return for. So, you know, it's really a high stakes gamble. And uh, as Jim Kelly, uh, VP of Corporate Relations at HECO, put it in a piece uh, not too long ago, 
Uh, he said if uh, if the ruling from the commission is adverse to the uh, the the Hoo Nua proposal to sell power, that the lawsuit is back on. Oh, lawsuit that well. initiated last year, I believe it was, seeking treble damages uh, for um, uh, or against Hawaiian Electric and Nextera. So this story ain't over, my friends. It's, no, it's uh, not over, uh, and it's more complicated than it seems. More chapters to come. Yeah, I think uh, energy is generally more complicated than it seems. Hohonua didn't meet their milestone. You know, so how That's can... Correct. You know, how... So this is this is the developer's risk, you know. They 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 bought the project from a from the a failed company. So how? <laughs> yeah. I I uh, you know why should why should the rate bear pair be stuck for a bad investment if it, that's what it comes down to? Well, there you have it, and uh, we'll we'll have to follow this later. I'm sure we will. I'm sure it's not over. As Marco says, it's not over. So thank you very much, uh, Mina Morita, Marco Mangelsdorf, for joining us again on Mina Morita and Me on Energy on Monday. And we'll do this again in two weeks' time. I look forward to more. We didn't cover all we wanted, but there's a lot more to cover next time. Thank you both.